We're here with Guy Rogers, who is the Valve Clinic Coordinator at the Guthrie Cardiac and Vascular Center in Serre. So Guy, we know that some people with valve, heart valve disease have no symptoms. If someone does have symptoms like irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath, or fainting, what should they do? Kara, the first thing they should do is go to their family doctor as these symptoms may not be symptoms of valve disease, but may be symptoms of something more severe, such as coronary artery disease. At their family doctor, he'll be able to order the proper diagnostic test. And if it is declared that it is valve disease, refer them to the appropriate people. Are some valve diseases more concerning than others? Yes, there are. For example, mitral valve prolapse is a very common problem that commonly has no symptoms whatsoever as opposed to aortic stenosis, which could cause people to have passing out episodes called syncope, chest pains leading to heart attacks, or even death. What are, some, what are the treatments for aortic stenosis? Well, the traditional treatment in the United States has always been open heart surgery. So a person would be put on a heart-lung machine, their chest cavity would be opened, the valve cut out, and a new valve stitched in. Fortunately, here at Guthrie, over the last couple of years, we've brought in an alternative called TAVR or transaortic valve replacement. This gives us the ability of replacing the aortic valve by going through a small puncture hole about the size of a pencil done through their groin called the femoral artery. If at that point, the uh, new valve will be advanced up across the top of the heart, up across their aortic valve, and then push their valve out of the way deploying a new valve. That valve is a natural material made out of either cow or pig valve surrounded by a metal cage and that metal cage will hold back their valve allowing blood to come through the new valve. This process is done in a very special operating room. Over the course of about an hour or two the person uh, will then go to intensive care afterwards and spend two or three days in the hospital. Afterwards, most of the time being discharged to home. We've also been able to do this in about half of our patients without even using anesthesia, which is wonderful in a population that is traditionally in their 80s and 90s. And so that's a really great thing because your family can also see you in it, and it's right close to home, a good way to... That also has been a very comforting thing to our patient because otherwise they may have to travel a significant distance, inconveniencing their family with people that they don't know, this allows them to stay at home. They can see their own practitioners, keeping their family close and not being inconvenienced as well. All right, thank you so much, Guy. Thanks for having me.